Mix 106, time for our Mix 106 movie reviews with our very own Mix 106 movie critic, Willie Waffle. A couple movies out this week. We've got the scary movie called The Darkness, and also George Clooney and Julia Roberts teaming up together in Money Monster. Can George Clooney survive? Can Julia Roberts save our dude in distress? That's what Money Monster is all about. Well, considering that, how many how many movies is this that they've done together and they've survived I, all the others? <laughs> you know, because you know, people do want to see them together. <laughs> I guess they must, or they wouldn't have done so many together. Exactly. Um, is this is this based in reality at all? E- a little bit. A little I mean, bit. You know, the, the idea is that George Clooney is kind of this buffoonish financial guru. He's got a, a cable show with all sorts of stupid special effects and graphics, and you know he acts like a moron most of the time. It sounds a little like Kramer. A little bit. A like little bit. <laughs> the, the financial guru that has his own show oh, and yeah. has his own special effects. That's why, except George Clooney is way better looking than he is. That's right. <laughs> so that's that's why I ask. I go, is this anything at all similar to something that may or may not have happened? I haven't even seen the trailer. Have they been promoting it? Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, you're watching the wrong TV shows. Apparently. Yeah, they're on all the talk shows. It doesn't play in between the wiggles? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so is it any good? That's what we need to know. I think it's re- I think it's very good. I think it's a good action thriller. You know, he all of a sudden his his set is invaded by this angry delivery man who lost a ton of money on a stock that George Clooney was touting, and now he wants answers. And as George Clooney starts to learn more, he thinks he wants some answers as well. Huh. And you know, Julia Roberts is the director and the producer who's kind of guiding him through all this. You know, trying to teach him how to be a journalist for the first time since he's never really been a journalist before. Mm. And I, I think what you're going to like is just it's got a good pace. It plays out in real time. You're, you're seeing everything unfold right there as it would happen over the course of the hour and a half. So it adds a little bit more intensity to it. And it, there's all these little twists, and all these little turns. You know, I'm not saying some of it's not predictable, but there are some surprise moments that are just a lot of fun to watch because they don't really kind of play out exactly the way you thought they would, and that's the surprise of movies. And how are George and uh, Julia's chemistry? Good as usual? Well, oh, good as usual. Oh, they're great, great together. together. They always will be. You know, the, the interesting part is you know, they, they're not really in anything together, but they're in every scene together because she's in the control booth, he's out on the set. So we, we have to watch them kind of play together verbally rather than with any kind of, you know, looking at each other or having any kind of, you know, a presence oh, with each other. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm going three waffles. That's pretty good. Wow. Considering what they have to go up against, week number two of Captain America: Winter Soldier. <laughs> oh yeah, they're gonna they're gonna lose that battle. Yeah. Oh, I, that's over. I, that, I, fig- that's I figured that that was the only reason that they were out this week is because they could be something a little bit different than Captain America: Winter Soldier. <laughs> America! America. Oh yeah. I mean, this, this is the movie for adults who don't own Captain America underoos. This, <laughs> this is that one. Uh, all right, and then the other movie, and this one I really haven't heard a whole lot about, uh, and it's been a while since we've had a horror film, mm-hmm. but once again, Kevin Bacon is yeah, out in another much, movie. Yeah, you haven't heard much about it because it's just not very good and everybody knows it. Uh, okay. It's called The Darkness, and you know, I didn't know you could be this bored at a horror movie. As, as you've got Kevin Bacon, you know, playing the father who's got this, you know, screwed up dysfunctional family and they're going on a big vacation uh, to the Grand Canyon. And when they come back, they don't bring jet lag. No, they don't. The young boy has brought five rocks from the Grand Canyon. <gasps> That's it illegal. Contains, oh, no. Yeah. And it contains an evil entity that wants the boy. Dun, dun, dun. It sounds good, though. It's, it just kind of is like every horror movie you've ever seen before in your life. I mean, they're just going by the playbook. There's nothing really shocking. Things are going to go bump in the night. Stuff's going to jump out of the dark at you once in a while. The family's going to be completely oblivious even 30 minutes later than they should be. <laughs> they should have figured this out so much earlier. So I'm going to say like one waffle. It's, it's a short movie that Aww. feels like it goes on forever. But it'll probably be pretty good because, like I said, there are horror film fanatics out there who haven't had a good horror f- or any horror film for a while. Yeah. But if they just hold on, The Conjuring 2 is coming in a few weeks. Well, they can't hold on. Besides well, that, you know, patience is a virtue. They've already seen Captain America Winter Soldier. America! <laughs> or they could see it a second time. Uh, or the third or fourth time because I think <laughs> there's people doing that, too.
All right. Um, uh, you were way off on your prediction by, uh, for Captain America last week, by the way. Yeah, I thought it would make over $200 million. This is declining returns for the Avengers movies. I, you know, I mean, not, not like, you know, their, their declining returns are still bigger than just about everything else out there. Right. But I think there has to be a little bit of concern that maybe there's a touch of uh, superhero fatigue setting in. Well, I mean, could. God, there's there so are so many, many superheroes. And, now, yeah. and there are two more coming from just this movie spinoffs. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just never stops, and, and they're, they're cashing in the big wheel right now, but eventually people are going to get tired of it. Yeah. Although I feel like I've been saying that for like five <laughs> years, and nobody's getting tired of it. Well, and the crazy part is that the movie is really good. I liked it better than the uh, second Avengers. Well, and that I think that's what's keeping it alive. At least when I get these superhero movies, at least the Marvel ones, they're good. They're fun. They're exciting. They've got great stories. They're not Batman versus Superman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, what do we got next week? Next week we're going to be talking about Angry Birds. All right. Can hardly wait. I can't, it's another one of those movies that I can't believe they made a whole movie out of a stupid game. But okay. <laughs> well, you know... They, Ideas come from all sorts of places. Yeah. Yeah. Right hey, you. I was the one that said Transformers was a stupid, stupid idea. Yeah. <laughs> I love it turned that out movie. that was a pretty good one. So did I. Yeah. I like, they can't make a movie about trucks that transform into aliens. That's the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> well, little did I know, though, they were going to put Megan Fox in it. Well, so. Yeah. All right, we'll talk to you next week, Willie. All right, we'll talk to you next week.